Javier Marici and Dan Sheehan squaring off in a six round light heavyweight bout here on Friday Night Fights from the Blue Horizon. Dan Sheehan is from Lawrence, Massachusetts. He's 26 years of age, weighed in at 176 pounds. Coming off a first round knockout, knockout win in October against Miguel Colon. You see his professional record, five and three, two knockouts. He has been knocked out once. And in the other corner, from Kosovo, Albania, Elvir Marici is 20 years of age, weighed in at 174 and a half pounds. He is 13 and 0 with eight knockouts, and he has five first round knockouts in his career. He is eight. So Elvir all set. Teddy Atlas in his corner. We'll hear from Teddy in just a bit. We asked Elvir about having Teddy Atlas in his corner. He knows boxing business. Not just boxing business, but he just doesn't lie to you. If you do something wrong, he tells you this is wrong. He doesn't say, like, a lot of trainers say, ah, okay, the next day you do it better. No, he wants you to prove it to him right there. You're going to do it better. So he doesn't lie to you. He tell you he, he's straight. He does everything, nev never does nothing like around. He just tells you straight in the face and everything. He just likes to do it perfect. Well, Teddy is a perfectionist. And I just want, I have to clear it up. Marici is 13 and 0 with eight knockouts. That is his record. And as I mentioned, five first round knockouts. This is a six round light heavyweight bout. And Teddy will get on headset in just a second. And some last minute instructions for his fighter. And Teddy will, for the first time, work the corner and work the broadcast. So it'll be very interesting. Ricci, of course, known as the Kosovo kid, his family in war torn Kosovo, Albania. And round number one is underway. Sheehan's only loss, a uh, only knockout loss, was to Chris Mills in Pennsylvania last year. John Carroll peering in. Small ring, 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. Richie working the jab to start things off. And as Teddy likes to say, anything off the jab to start is always very effective. Teddy, you all settled in? Yeah, I am. This guy comes right at you, Bob, so we're going to look. The one thing you don't want to do, my kid just got caught going straight back. You don't want to get caught with a guy coming right in, standing up, posing. You want to punch him between those gaps. So we're going to look for an opportunity to catch this guy early, slow him down a little bit, because the scouting reports, he comes right at you. Not only is this the first time that a color man is actually working a corner, it's probably the first time a color man on a TV broadcast doesn't have the best seat. Yeah, you're right about that. I've got a couple of people jumping around in front of me here. But try to keep your concentration. One thing, if my kid does something wrong, sometimes he'll go straight back a little bit too much. And with the more experienced guys, their time you're coming in. Teddy, you feel you got warmed up properly? You were obviously out here with the Billy Irwin fight. Yeah, I had a good guy there, Jimmy Glenn. Good boxing guy, warming up. Let those hands go, little Elvia. Right now, I think my kid's looking to be a little too defensive. When you got a guy throwing this many punches, sometimes you got to punch down the pipe. Teddy Sheehan seems very wide with his punches. He has a little bit of ball. A double left hook, and then... Ricci goes to the head with it. In some ways, Bob, it looks like my kid's looking for the perfect shot. Just a little bit too much right now. You see Sheehan missing wildly with the wide punches. See, what I don't want him to do is pull back and let those wide punches have the distance they need to connect. To be honest with you, I'd rather be a punch inside those wide punches instead of trying to defend them on the outside. Hey, I'm always saying some of these guys, I was saying before, Billy Irwin was throwing one punch at a time. Right now, my guy needs to put them together. Teddy, you know more about uh, Elvira's opposition than, than we do. Uh, obviously, 13 and 0, eight knockouts. He's had some fights in Georgia, Carolina. What about the level of opposition of Sheehan? Is this about what he's been in against, or is it a little bit better, a little worse? He's been in probably two times with guys a little bit better than this, a little bit more experienced than this. Guys that have gone 10 rounds before. And Ricci does dig to the body. Sheehan misses with a counter left. There's that slapping right hand from Sheehan. And Sheehan has been the busier of the two here in this first area. Ricci may be a little bit tight. A lot of exposure here. 
A lot of stories have been written about the fact that his trainer is actually working the corner. And now Elvira heads back to his respective corner, and so does Dan Sheehan. And will now eavesdrop That's with over. Teddy and Elvira. That's you won three rounds. That's all over with. It's just another fight. Stop holding so much. You're looking for the one shot, and you're trying to be too perfect defensively, especially pulling out. You don't want to pull out with a guy throwing wide punches. You want to punch inside those wide oh, punches. Right? Punch, so pull punch, out thinking he's going to give you time to adjust yourself. This guy's against me. Second, Fast forward. Well, you're standing out there trying to give you time. He's coming right in. Once you're inside, you're going to stay in there. Hit him a good round shot. Make it two. Don't pull out of your own control. So what do we say? Stop posing. Stop looking for one punch. Let's be inside those wide punches. And when you're in a good spot inside to the body with the left hook, make it two. All right? Settle down now. Concentrate. All right, we're getting set for the start of round number two in the scheduled six-round light heavyweight bout between Elvira Marichi, Teddy Atlas's boxer in the red and black. And journeyman Dan Sheehan from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Let him go, let him go, let him go. In the gold and black in the men. And uh, here are the punch numbers in round one. Sheehan threw 110 punches. Marichi threw 78. Sheehan landed 20. Marichi 21. Sheehan landed 16 of 20 power shots. And Sheehan tags Marichi going straight back. And uh, Teddy, I know you may not like this. You may want to come over here and punch me. But I, I kind of gave Sheehan the first round. Well. He was definitely busier. I don't know if he landed the cleaner punches, but definitely was not a great round for my kid. Let's hope that he takes that round to warm up a little bit. I think the attention, I think everything here has got him a little bit of tight. And he's got a guy, quite honestly, who's not a real scientific guy, a guy who's coming right at you. Well, Sometimes you can think too much with these guys. Well, you got to like the double left hook to the body and then the right over the top. Yeah, we were asking for that in the corner. A little uppercut on the inside by Sheehan score. Yeah, when you're inside, my kids should know better than that. That's the only punch spot you can get hit with when you're in real close. So don't lay in the middle. Avir a little low. Sheehan got hit low in the first round. Hey, what about Sheehan? Uh, I know it's it's hard to look at it in an objective standpoint, but uh, he's come in and, and done a pretty good job here. Now, he hasn't been intimidated by any of this stuff going on, and he is what he is, Bob. He's a gutsy kid. A little raw. I'm not gonna lie and try to dress him up as more because he's in there with my guy. He's a little bit raw, a little bit crude, and some of these punches that my kid got hit with, he shouldn't have got hit with. But you know what? That's why he's in a six-round fight. Yeah, we have to point out that Ovira is not one or two fights away from the championship. This is a work in progress. They'd rather go around them instead of going back because all his punches, all Sheehan's punches, Bob, are aimed for when you're going out. Everything is aimed wide and when you're going out. So don't help them. Don't go out into them. Once you're in there, you better well stay in there like now. Work it. Work it. Another shot right on the belt line. Good double left hook to the body by Marichi. And one of those shots from my guy was probably a little bit low, but the referee did the right thing. That one was low. Ricci got away with a low left hand. You know why? He's throwing uppercuts in there. The guy's pressing him. And when you throw uppercuts, you lose a little control of the accuracy. Sheehan willing to mix it up. Ricci making a miss. Elvira Marici with some very good body shots here in round number two. In our Philadelphia, Bob Papa along with Teddy Atlas, sort of, at the Blue Horizon. Teddy's going to get his headset back on. He's working the corner of Elvira Marici and the black and red trunks against journeyman Dan Sheehan and the gold Renan. And we're through to a six-round bout. Light heavyweights. Coming up in the main event, Arthur Allen, James Butler for Butler's USBA Super Middleweight Championship. Better round number two for Marici as he landed 39 of 90 punches in the round, and 31 of the 39 landed by Marici with power shots. Good hooks to the body. See what he's doing there, Bob, my kid? He missed the jet, but he turned him a little bit. Jet went around his shoulders, so he turned Sheehan a little bit. And Teddy, uh, obviously, we have the privilege of listening into the corners in between rounds. And 
You're no exception. And now, let's see, low blow on a point. He's going to get a point taken away yet. Well, he was warned in the first round and warned in the second round, and now here in the third, he's going to lose a point. Teddy, you mentioned to your fighter in between while we were in commercial, you've got to be more professional. What did you mean by that? Well, he, when he was hitting this guy, he was looking and waiting to see whether or not the guy was going to come back before he did the next thing. In other words, he was looking for the guy to show he was hurt or look, to, look for the guy to show something for him to go on to the next thing. A pro don't do that. But you know what? I never said my kid was a pro yet. He's a kid who's a six-round fighter, and you want to try to become a pro. Just because you're a six-round fighter and you have some talent, don't mean you're a pro. A pro is a guy who will mostly does not have ups and downs, and well, that one, takes a long time. One good thing about you in the corner, they put up my scorecard now. I got a one round apiece. I gave that here the second round. I thought he landed real good shots to the body. professionalism a little bit. He's doing some good things in there. But sometimes when he hits the guy with one good clean right hand to the body like he did a second ago, he's not putting the other punches together because he's not seeing an effect from the guy. He's not seeing the guy say, oh, I'm hurt. But a pro doesn't have to see that. That's why my kid needs more experience. Well, he's still landing the clean shots here around the wide punches of Sheen. Or a good pro he lands something clean. He knows he hurts the guy. He follows up. Ricci has lost a point in this round, though, for a low blow. Third warning. And he got hit low again, did she? And then he eats an uppercut while he's waiting for referee John Carroll to step in. That's a no-no. Another one right on the belt line by Marici. This kid's throwing so many punches. My kid's trying to make too many moves sometimes. Closing seconds of round three, a round controlled by Marici, but he loses a point for the low blow. So thus you get an even round out of it. We're going to take a look. Now, in round one, he was warned. In round two, Marici was warned. Now, let's see if we have a good angle here of Marici going low. Boom. That's below the black waistband. Even though it's on the hip, it's still a low blow. And when you do get warned a couple of times by the referee, eventually you get a point deducted. Get set for round number four. Even amount of punches landed in round number three between Marici and Sheehan, but Marici in the red and black clearly landing the better punches in round number three. Although Sheehan landed two more punches and threw 13 more, it was Marici who landed the clean shots to the body and to the head. A lot of Sheehan's punches, slapping shots, but uh, Teddy, you got loses a point for the low blow, so you got an even round out of it. Yeah, he's got to pick it up a little bit. That's the problem with short fights. Something like that happens, and you can, you can all of a sudden be in a little bit of a, of a danger zone. And plus, you had a fairly close first round, and then you you won round three, which he did, you think. But uh, that low blow, you lose a point. Uh, what do you want to see Marici do? The machine walks into the right. I like him to stop making so many moves. He's got a guy in there who just moves his hands. And if you just make moves, you allow the guy, you handcuff yourself. Even though it's good to see defensive moves, you allow the guy to move his hands. I like one move like that, and then two or three punches instead of one. My kid is showing his immaturity, quite honestly. When he hits him with a punch, Bob, he wants to see a reaction. Hey, not everyone's going to show you a reaction. I got news for you. Because that's what a pro is. Pro keeps going. 
just too much too fast for out here. You know, with all the publicity and the fact that all this was happening, maybe he wasn't ready for that? No, I think he's got a kid who's a little raw. He's got an edge on him. It would be too much if it was a, even a higher opponent. But no, I don't think it's too much. I think it's something that he should be able to deal with now. And quite honestly, when he does, and hopefully he will in a successful way, it will mature and it will wind up helping him. But no, I don't think it's too much. I mean, it'd be easy for me to say that. Like, I'm not going to admit if it was. But... I would say, well, we have a guy, let's be honest here, we've got a guy who doesn't have huge talent. So I, I think that the margin of error was there a little bit. In other words, if my guy faltered a little, which he is a little bit, he still should be able to out-talent the guy. He's allowing the guy to get off here. And he's pulling straight back. And the fans are kind of rallying behind Sheen a little bit. Everyone loves an underdog. A short left hand by Marici. Well, my kid's going to have to pull it together. He's letting these rounds be a little too close. And you know what? He's rolled himself to this guy. This guy's fight. But right now, we can't worry about that. we got to punch inside those white punches. You see, Elfiel, when he punches inside those white punches, he's okay. When he pulls out, he allows the guy room. And Marici trying to dig in, and Sheehan giving him all he can handle through four. Boy, that is a Blue Horizon special. Now, folks, if you've never been to the Blue Horizon, that is a typical Blue Horizon type bout. Underway between Elvira Marici and Dan Sheehan. A lot of people thought that Marici would probably walk through Sheehan, but Dan Sheehan with a five and three record has been very tough on Marici. He's not the most skilled guy, but one thing is for certain, he's a tough guy. And as we take a look at the punch numbers in round four, Marici lands 36 of 64, 56 percent. And 26 of those were power shots. Sheehan threw 108 punches, 44 more than Marici. And he landed 27. And Kenny, you know, granted, Elvira obviously landing the cleaner, harder punches. But when your guy gets outthrown by 40-something punches, you, you have to worry that the judges may favor the aggressive style. Hey, Bob, who do you have ahead? I have Elvira ahead. Uh, two rounds to one and obviously the one even round because of the low blow that Marici had taken away in round number three. Well, there's no doubt about it. Mike Kidd's acting like a kid who did not have a hundred amateur fights. That's the benefit to all those amateur fights. You get mature, you get more seasoned, you have a handful, maybe 10, 12 amateur fights. You know what? He's acting like that right now. I leave my scorecard, 38-37, Marici through four. This is a six-rounder. Sheehan didn't have a lot of amateur experience. He's an all-state football player and wrestler in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Okay. put combinations together. Get that, uh, that sponge ready. Don't forget, folks, coming up Get the main event, ready. James Butler and Arthur Allen for Butler's USBA Super Middleweight Championship. Not earlier tonight, Billy Irwin stops John Bailey in the seventh round on cuts. Right now, Bill Maricki trying to go to 14 and 0 against Dan Sheehan. And you can hear Teddy in the background yelling at Marici, stop the one punch. Hey, let me tell you something, Bob. You made a good point before. Was this too much? No, it's not too much. You know why? Because you're seeing, if he can't beat this guy, even under these, I'll be very honest, even under these conditions. And you know what? It's going to be a tough business for him to make a living at. Right now, he's been fought with my guy. No doubt about it. He should be doing more this round. 
but he's got a guy in front of him by the level of talent that he's had that my guy was able to get away with. Well, Sheehan with some slapping punches, but he's scoring. And Marici's on the retreat, going straight back. Yeah, because he's, he's making too many moves right now, and when he had a chance to move his hands, he didn't. He allowed the guy to get late. Well, they each exchange right hands. Toss up here in round five. Ricci is not unknown to publicity. A lot has been written about him and features on the news about the fact that, oh, and I think another low blow. Another low blow from Ricci as the bell ends round number five. And Teddy, depending on it, well, Teddy's now off headset, but depending on how the judges saw that last round, if you gave it to Sheehan, that's a 10-8 round for Sheehan. Everybody in this place is on your side. George Cruz, the trainer, let's take a look. There's a low blow. I mean, you can't dispute it. And in the last round, punch numbers, 18 of 78 for Sheehan, 14 of 65 for Marici. And in all honesty, I've got to go 10-8 for Sheehan because of the low blow. Let's show him something. Well, Elvira Marici is in for a tough final round. Marici had a point deducted in round number three for a low blow. And he had a point deducted in round number five for a low blow. And if you gave Sheehan round number five, you got to make it a 10-8 round. And Sheehan is sensing a huge upset. Nothing like playing the role of the underdog. And we have Teddy back on. Teddy, you there? This is, an urgent, this is an urgent spot for my kid right here. But Teddy, you could make the case that the last round, Sheehan pulled it out. He threw more punches, he landed more, and with the point deducted, that becomes 10-8 on the judges' cards if they gave him the round. My kid's posing after he punches, and that's why he's getting caught. Even though they're wide punches from this kid, he's a game kid. I still say it, he's not a... He's not a skilled kid, this kid, but hey, Teddy, he's being effective. He's being effective because my kid is looking for him to go away when he hits him, and you can't act like that. Teddy, has this been harder for you than you thought? Yeah, a little bit. Put him together there. Up there. To the head. It would be a lot better if my kid would have won a first time knockout, I'll tell you that much. Right now, it's not a matter of anything. It's a matter of moving your hands and forget about technique. Right now, it's a matter. We'll do that in the. We'll do that on the chalkboard when we get to the gym. Right now, he's just got to gut himself out and get a win here in this round. I think Marici needs to win the round to get a draw. Now the one point edge for Sheehan and Marici lost two points in this fight for low blows. This is a tough business, Bob, I tell you. Uh, it's got to be tough for you, too, because it's more than just sitting and talking to me during the three minutes and then talking to your fighter in between the round. There's, there's stuff you've got to yell to your boxer during the action, isn't there? And see, Teddy's taking off the headset to yell at Elvier and offer him encouragement. Oh, good right hand there. there, but he doesn't put the damn left hook behind him. John Carroll, and he's going to say it wasn't low, but that's the third time that Marici threw a low blow, and what we're going to do, too, is we're going to get the judges' scorecards uh, from, refer from the commissioner, Greg Serb, and find out how the judges had this thing, but Elvira Marici
Ricci has been disqualified for a low blow, the third one. There was a low blow in round three, a low blow in round number five. He was cautioned for a low blow in round number one as well. And Alvira is no longer undefeated. Now Teddy is teaching him the life lesson. So Teddy talking to Alvear and saying, take it like a man, I'm assuming. We can't hear it here at ringside. Ricci had landed 23 of 53 in the final round. She in 20 of 76. Now we're going to take a look and see if there was a low blow. The last one. Yeah, it looks like it's a little below the black. Questionable. And she and waving goodbye, a little taunting. I don't like the sportsmanship there. I want to come back here. I like fighting him. So uh, it looked like it was below the black waistband, right on the border of the black waistband. But Alvir Marici is disqualified in round number six as uh, three low blows. And uh, let's see, two of the three judges had Marici ahead. No. Here's Brian and Max. Let's clear that up in a second. Guys? All right, indeed, we will go back there because give credit to Dan Sheehan. He's fighting pretty much an even fight.